Okay, so are you ready to get a little creeped out? Because today we're diving into Whispers in the Dark, the Blackwood yeah. Asylum. But, like, we're not just going to rehash the story. We're going deeper, like, right. behind the scenes of what makes this fictional podcast tick. Yeah, you know what gets me about Whispers in the Dark? It's not just about jump scares. It's like this slow burn. It gets under your skin. Totally. And Blackwood Asylum itself, uh, it's the perfect setting. Yeah. Like, abandoned asylum, history of disappearances, those local legends, you know, uh, you know, the ones, I mean, come on, just thinking about it gives me chills. It's like tapping into that fear we all have, right? The unknown being trapped somewhere, you know, something's just not right. Makes sense why haunted asylums are such a horror staple. For sure. And Whispers in the Dark knows how to use those tropes. Yeah. But they add these details that get you. Like, remember in the intro how they say the screams could be heard for miles even after the asylum was sealed shut? See, lines like that, that's where sound design comes in. They paint a picture with words, but the delivery, that creepy tone, that's what really gets you. Cooked right from the start. Then we meet the paranormal team heading into Blackwood. You can practically hear the excitement in their voices, which is kind of creepy when you think about it. Because you're right there with them. You feel that initial excitement, maybe even a little skeptical, like, is this place really haunted? And that's smart. They're not just throwing scares at you, they're bringing you into the story. And the investigation team. Classic archetypes, right? You've got the skeptic, the believer, the cautious leader. And that's where the tension comes from, that these big personalities stuck in this terrifying situation. Yeah. You can't help but wonder who's going to lose it first. And speaking of losing it, let's talk about the structure. Whispers in the Dark takes its time building suspense slowly through what the characters go through. Yeah, it's like those early episodes set the stage. Mm. All those creepy stories about Blackwood, the patience, the whispers, the feeling of being watched, and just when you think you've got a handle on things. Bam, you're in the thick of it. Mm. Unexplained noises, equipment malfunctions. It's subtle, but it gets in your head. And the sound design goes from creepy to seriously messed up. They use these little cues, a whisper here, a distorted voice there playing with your senses. Remember the first encounter segment? Those whispers all around the investigators? Like the asylum itself was speaking? Chills, dude. Chills. Right. Okay, so we've got a creepy asylum, a terrified investigation team, and all these unexplained events. What happens next? Well, that's when they stumble upon that locked room, the lost files. Every horror cliche, but it works. You just know something awful is in there. Because we can't resist a little mystery, right? even when we know it might be bad news. Oh, yeah. That curiosity. It's a powerful thing. And in horror, it usually doesn't end well. And it definitely doesn't here. Yeah. Those recordings, the distorted voices, the whispers from the past, it's like crossing a line, you know? Because suddenly it feels real, especially in audio only, where your imagination is already working overtime. And the creators of Whispers in the Dark, they know how to use that. Oh, they do. And those recordings, they're not just there to creep us out. They're critical to the story. They reveal what happened to Blackwood. The patience, the experiments, the attempts to talk to the dead. It's like opening a puzzle box of horror. And then how those recordings start messing with the investigators. They start seeing things, nightmares, each tied to a specific recording, a moment in Blackwood's past. Like the asylum is using their fear against them, like some messed up psychological torture. Exactly. It's not just about ghosts and demons anymore. It's about the darkness inside all of us. And the sound design amplifies that. Dude, those scenes with the headphones on, the distorted voices, heavy breathing chainsaws, screams. It's like a horror movie in your ears. Disorientation, unease. Our brains are hardwired to react to those sounds. Danger. And when they're amplified, distorted, used in weird ways, it triggers something primal in us. It's like that feeling when you're walking alone at night and you hear a twig snap. You freeze up. Your heart races. Yeah. Our instinct kicking in and whispers in the dark nails that feeling. And just when you think it can't get any worse, they find Blackwood's big secret. The hidden chamber where the doctors did those experiments. Talk about consequences. No kidding. We went from a haunted asylum to the doctors creating the entity that haunts it. That's a game changer. They unleashed something, and now they're trapped with it. It's classic hubris, right? Like humanity trying to control things we don't understand. And uh, in horror, it always backfires. Big time. So now what? We have this entity. The investigators are terrified. What happens next? This is where things take a turn. It becomes less about the haunted house and more about, well, something deeper, more psychological. Okay. I'm intrigued. So how does it all go down? Well, the team's leader, she comes up with a plan. They found this piece of equipment. They think it can sever the entity's hold on Blackwood. But remember this thing, it feeds on fear, on doubt. So their only hope is to confront their fears head on. So they're gonna fight back. 
Huh. I mean, what choice do they have at this point? Right. It's like sink or swim, but mm-hmm. it's more than just survival. This entity, it doesn't just want to hurt them. It wants to break them. Okay. Yeah, that's terrifying. So how do they even begin to fight something like that? Well, that's where the psychological aspect really kicks in. They have to confront their own demons, those deep-seated fears, the doubts. So it's a battle for their sanity as much as it is for their lives. Exactly. And the creators of Whispers in the Dark, they use sound to make that struggle so vivid. Remember those scenes where the characters are hearing things? Whispers taunting them, playing with their minds. Oh, man, those parts were intense. Like you could feel the characters coming unraveled. Right, because that's what makes this entity so terrifying. If it I... doesn't just attack them physically, it gets inside their heads, turns their fears against them. And that's where that whole idea of psychological horror really hits home. Mm. Because it's messing with the characters' perceptions of reality, mm. making them question their own sanity. And as listeners, we're right there with them questioning what's real and what's not, because the sound design is so immersive, so believable. It's like they're using sound to create this atmosphere of paranoia and dread, where you're constantly on edge waiting for the other shoe to drop. And it works brilliantly, because it plays on our own innate fears, that feeling of being watched, of being hunted, of being completely alone in the dark with something that wants to hurt us. So how do they even escape that? Yeah. Like, how do you fight something that's messing with your mind? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? And it's something that characters grapple with throughout the rest of the podcast. They try to rationalize what's happening. They try to find a logical explanation. But logic doesn't really apply in a haunted asylum, does it? Not when you're dealing with an entity that defies the laws of nature. No. It's a fight they can't win with conventional weapons or tactics. So what do they do? They have to dig deep. They have to find a strength they didn't know they had. Easier said than done when you're facing your worst nightmares, right? (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) But that's the heart of the story, isn't it? It's about finding the courage to confront the unknown, to face your fears head on, even when everything inside you is screaming to run away. And do they? Well, you'll have to keep listening to find out, won't you? So they're going in blind, basically, (laughs) hoping for the best. In a way, yeah. But it's also about faith, isn't it? Believing in something even when you can't see it or touch it. And facing your fears head on. Yeah. That seems to be a big theme in Whispers in the Dark. Definitely. It's about that moment when everything is on the line and you have to choose between giving in to fear or fighting back with everything you've got. And it sounds like the creators of this podcast, they really want us to feel that tension. That struggle between our primal instincts and our conscious minds. Oh, absolutely. They use every trick in the book, sound design, pacing, character development, to really draw us into that struggle. And it's effective, man. Like, you can't help but put yourself in the character's shoes and wonder how you would react in that situation. So how does it all end? I mean, without giving away any spoilers, does the team make it out of Blackwood? Uh, Well, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? And uh, the source material is very clear that whispers in the dark doesn't give us a clean cut answer. You mean it's one of those ambiguous endings? Exactly. It's left open to interpretation. Did they succeed in breaking the entity's hold or did they become another part of Blackwood's grim history? We don't know for sure. See, I kind of like that. It's like the story stays with you long after the episode is over. Mm -hmm. You're left thinking about the possibilities, the what ifs. Precisely. It's that lingering sense of unease that really good horror does so well. It's not about the jump scares or the gore. It's about that creeping dread that seeps into your bones and stays with you. And Whispers in the Dark definitely knows how to get under your skin. Without a doubt. It's a masterclass in psychological horror and sound design. And that ambiguous ending, it's the cherry on top. It leaves you wanting more, but also kind of dreading what that more might be. So for those listening who haven't experienced Whispers in the Dark yet, would you recommend it? Absolutely. Hmm. If you're a fan of horror, especially the kind that gets under your skin and stays with you long after the credits roll, then this podcast is a must listen. It's a wild ride from beginning to end. And that ending, well, it'll leave you with plenty to think about. So we've gone deep into Blackwood Asylum, the characters, the sound design, and of course that ambiguous ending. But what's the big takeaway here? What makes this fictional podcast so compelling that we just spent all this time dissecting it? That's a great question. And I think it comes down to this whispers in the dark reminds us of the power of stories, (laughs) especially in a world that's increasingly dominated by screens and visual stimuli. There's something so primal, so captivating about the spoken word. It's like going back to our roots, right? To a time when stories were shared around a campfire and our imaginations did the rest. Exactly. And Whispers in the Dark taps into that ancient tradition of storytelling using sound and silence to create a truly immersive and unforgettable experience. 
So the next time you're looking for a good scare or just a break from the everyday world, turn off the lights, put on your headphones, and take a trip to Blackwood Asylum. Mm -hmm. But be warned, you might not come back the same. And on that note, I think we've done enough exploring for one day, but fear not. We'll be back soon with another deep dive into the world of horror podcasts. Until then, sweet screams. And don't forget to check under the bed.